Hi there, and welcome to Campus Camper, How Fire TV's first video game review show. I apologize in advance for having to do the first episode with a talking robot, but for one reason or another everything fell to shit when making this episode. To give you an idea, this episode was supposed to be released before Halloween, with a video of Alien Isolation. It is now mid-November and I am reviewing two completely different games. So with that terrible intro out of the way, let's review some damn video games, brap brap. The first game is The Evil Within, which was released for all major platforms last month. The game is directed by the creator of the Resident Evil franchise, and his input definitely shows throughout, from the gameplay to the storyline. In terms of a plot, Evil Within follows your character, Detective Sebastian Castellanos, who is kidnapped and nearly killed when investigating a massacre at a local insane asylum. After a lucky escape from his captors, Sebastian finds himself in a world turned upside down and he must fight through a horde of zombies and monsters to uncover the truth behind this world and return to his own. Overall the plot plays out like a love child of Resident Evil meets Silent Hill meets Inception, the only problem being that the writers were not up to the challenge to deal with an idea this complex. Even the ending doesn't really bring it all together, and it somehow raises more questions, which is the game's biggest failing. Even Sebastian's inputs don't he help the plot, with his dialogue either sounding like cookie one-liners or coming across as laughable attempts at bringing some emotion to the character. Poor guy. Rest in peace. Gameplay-wise there isn't really anything outstanding on offer. The stealth and combat system handles a lot like The Last of Us, so fans of this will feel pretty comfortable moving through the game using solely stealth tactics. One of the way Evil Within attempts to add tension is it starts you off with abysmal aiming and a sprint time of about 3 seconds, which quickly becomes frustrating when you try to escape a fast moving enemy, and Sebastian decides to stop for 5 seconds to get his breath back. Checkpoints in the game offer an upgrade system so you can increase these stats, but with so many options you may find yourself choosing weapon upgrades over your sprint time, meaning you'll find yourself sticking to stealth into the later chapters. In terms of actual survival horror elements, the evil within doesn't really deliver. Even on the initial hardest setting there's never really a moment where you find yourself low on ammo, meaning you never get the feeling you're outgunned or overwhelmed when mowing down anything in your path. Out of ammo? A lot of this falls to the director, who definitely looked a lot to Resident Evil for inspiration. I can't help if you leave me in the dark, Doc. There are many obvious cut and paste tropes from the franchise, such as the very first zombie encounter which is a clear homage to the first game, and the penultimate boss battle will feel very familiar to anyone who completed Resident Evil 4. Where the game does succeed however is that it is still entertaining enough to keep you going through to the very end. It may not offer anything new, but what it does offer is an overall satisfying experience, and when it does try to evoke tension and scares it succeeds, with a number of bosses and enemies giving you an actual challenge and a genuine panic reaction. Shit, I'd better run. Whilst it may not keep this up from start to finish, the evil within does offer players a game long theme of gross out moments. I think something's coming. For example there's a very good chance a headshot won't kill an enemy, and they will continue to charge you with a chunk of their head blown clean off. 
This is the true essence of evil within. It's at heart a gore fest rather than a clever horror title, so you'll often find yourself running around shooting satisfyingly destructive weaponry at nightmarish monsters, and since the game is continually throwing you new problems and enemies, it never really feels stale. No. No. There's nothing to be afraid of. Overall the evil within fails to deliver as a survival horror, but it does succeed in making for the grossest game of the year. For that, I give it 7 out of 10, it definitely offers an entertaining experience of gore and supernatural mystery, but it fails to call itself a true horror game, as it suffers from a poor storyline, and even the graphics, which are poor for even last general consoles, do at times kill the mood. If you want a genuine survival horror game however, go by Alien Isolation. On the other end of the spectrum, Five Nights at Freddy's is possibly one of the scariest games of the year. Released a few months back now, you can buy it for £4 on PC, and they've just released the mobile version, though for the best experience PC is the one to get. The backstory is you're a night watchman at Freddy Fats Bears Pizzas, a Chuck E. Cheese style kids restaurant. Your job is to keep an eye on the cameras throughout the night, but watch your power consumption so that you make it to 6 a.m., which is easy enough. The only problem though is that the animatronics of Freddy and his friends are alive, and they're extremely hostile. As you check the cameras from time to time you'll notice the animatronics are gone, and a quick search will find them stood motionless in different rooms staring at your camera, with each move bringing them closer to your security booth. The objective of the game is to keep the animatronics from getting into your booth, whilst keeping your power until the night is over. As the nights progress the animatronics become more active, the main ones to be cautious of are Freddy, who is highly elusive and quick to attack, and the fox in Pirate Cove, who becomes more active when the cameras are off. If an animatronic is not on the cameras, you need to check your blind spots to make sure they're not outside your doors, and if they are you need to act fast to shut the doors to keep them out. The problem here is that the doors use the most power, so keeping them shut for long periods of time may result in you running out of power, at which point you are at the mercy of Freddy and his friends. A description of the game doesn't do it justice, and even if you've watched the thousands of gameplay videos online it doesn't prepare you for the terror you'll feel when you're in control of the security booth. You'll hear noises outside, the animatronics will knock off your camera feed, and you'll soon notice how quickly you eat through power as you fight desperately to find the balance between power saving and surveillance of the creepy animatronics coming to kill you, especially Foxxy, who unlike the rest of his friends, will charge at your office if you don't keep an eye on him, and if you're lucky enough to shut your door in time, You'll hear him trying to smash his way through to you for hours on end. Five Nights at Freddy's is definitely worth buying, if you or your friends haven't seen anything of it yet then it's the perfect game to get everyone round for. It's so effective for such a simplistic game, and it can be played on even the slowest of computers due to its minimal running requirements. If you're already well aware of the Freddy's game, then I suggest you check out Five Nights at Freddy's 2 which came out this week, as it manages to outdo the first game in every way, adding new rooms, more animatronics, and worst of all, it takes away your door privileges. For this, I give Freddy's a 10 tenths, and ditto for its sequel, which I am currently still playing. That's all for the first show, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you'll be seeing many more episodes soon. Drop us a message if you want to see a review for a specific game old on you, and we'll make sure you'll see it in a future episode. Brand